Hi, Dr. Roos. How are you doing? This is my uh, video. Uh, I'm making these concept videos. They're called uh, for my classes. And this is only going to be on the macromolecules, which is basically big molecule. And then there are four, right? The, the carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So you should be familiar to be able to identify those four as being macromolecules, right? And then there'll be some things I'll talk about in the video about what you should know about carbohydrates and that kind of stuff. So the first, before we get into all four of them, other than lipids, right, the three of them are, are polymers. So I want to explain that concept, right? A polymer refers to many monomers, right? That's what that term means. The, the hard part about the this concept is that monomer can refer to many things in nature. And nature has a way of using repetitiveness. Let's say, you know, like you have a monomer number one linked to monomer number two, linked to monomer number three, linked to monomer number four. Right? Those, and then you could have five, six, seven, eight. If it's DNA, right? You can have 260 million monomers all stuck together to make one chromosome found in DNA, right? A chromosome is a structure and a monomer for nucleic acid or nucleotides, there are four nucleotides. So sometimes the number of nucleotides aren't that many, but you might have millions of them linked together in that, in that example, right? So the, if it's a protein, the monomer are amino acids. Okay, so right, amino acids are linked together to make proteins and nucleotides to make things like either DNA or RNA that are found. These are two examples of nucleic acids. So that's the first one that we want to talk about uh, is the carbohydrates, though, right? And there are many different monomers for carbohydrates, but the ones that we're mainly focusing on are the ones that contain glucose as the monomer, right? So that means, right, number one is glucose, it's linked to another molecule of glucose, which is linked to another molecule of glucose. And you can go on, and if you're making starch, for instance, there are approximately a thousand glucose monomers linked together to make starch. Now another glucose molecule macromolecule is glycogen and glycogen is similar to starch the glucoses are linked together in a different linkage it's called they're all all the all of the glucoses are linked together it's called a glyco uh, a glycosidic bond or what holds right between glucose number one and number two is a glycosidic bond. It's a covalent bond. There's another glycosidic bond between two and three. Whether you're making starch or glycogen, the other molecule that contains glucose is cellulose. So these are the macromolecules. Glucose is also considered a carbohydrate, which is kind of strange. Normally, they, right, amino acids aren't considered proteins, but they make up the macromolecule proteins. Glucose make up these macromolecules and glucose is considered a carbohydrate and so are they. Okay, so glycosidic bond is important to remember. The concept of, right, a polysaccharide and a, is it poly, let's just say polysaccharide is a polymer, except you could say it's it's many sugars or saccharides. So, right, 
all of these are polysaccharides, right, or polymers of glucose, right? To make these three molecules, you need glucose molecules, small glucose molecules that are linked together with glycosidic bonds. Okay, so that's carbohydrate. Now lipids don't fit the polymer definition, but they are considered hydrophobic, right? That's the, you'd say all, right? They are all, uh, that means they're afraid of water or if they're in water, they want to get out of it, right? They, they separate in water. So oil, fats, right? A fat is an example of a lipid. It contains glycerol and triglycerides, or it's a triglyceride rather, and it contains, uh, a fat contains glycerol and fatty acids. It's not a real big molecule, but you know, they, we group it in with the other three. Then we have the phospholipid, and phospholipids contain glycerol and only two fatty acids instead of three fatty acids that are found in a fat. Then the other major category are the steroids, right? They're considered lipids and things like cholesterol or there's testosterone and estrogen are examples of lipids. So you would say anything listed here is considered hydrophobic, All right? That's how we, we describe lipids. All right, now amino acids make proteins. So you have, let's say, amino acid number one linked to amino acid number two, linked to amino acid number three. Now there can be, in a protein, 100 to even 4,000 or so or more amino acids all linked together, right? There's 20 different amino acids, right? So there's, in nucleotides, there's only four if you compare the two. Then the other thing about proteins is you use a peptide bond, right? Glycosidic bond is in carbohydrates. It's equivalent to a peptide bond to make proteins, right? There, it's the bond between the amino acids. So if you have a, a hundred amino acids in a protein, then you have 99 peptide bonds holding them all together. Now the don't, don't confuse, a peptide bond is a covalent bond. A right? glycosidic bond is a covalent bond. The bonds that are holding these atoms and molecules together are covalent bonds predominantly, right? So don't forget, or it's not, it's not one or the other, right? It can be both in this case. Okay, so proteins, I get into uh, you know how you have different levels of protein folding there's primary secondary tertiary and some proteins have quaternary <clears throat> as well well that's the right remember what's the the monomer for proteins amino acids <clears throat> now when you right nucleic acids are the the macromolecule Right, and then two of the major examples of that is DNA and RNA. Now you have DNA nucleotides, or let's say little d, NTPs, there's four of them. And then there's nucleotide triphosphates, that's what NTP stands for. There's four of them that make up RNA. The ones that make up DNA have deoxyribose, that's what the D stands for, the nucleotides that make up RNA, right, have ribose, right, so that the nucleotides are different. You can't use RNA nucleotides to make DNA, or you couldn't make DNA nucleotides to make RNA. I just want to list them all. Little d, ATP, 
is one of the four, little d CTP, little d GTP, and little d TTP. These four nucleotides make up DNA, right? And we use the little d in front of them to denote the difference, like say then, when you make RNA, you use ATP, or when we make ATP during cellular respiration in the mitochondria, we make this ATP is another way of thinking of it, right? We have CTP without the little d. We have GTP without the little d. We don't have ribose with the T, right? We have UTP with, right? So all four of these have ribose for a, a sugar. All four of these have deoxyribose for a sugar. Okay. You would, all of, you could say, this is a list of the nucleotides that make up DNA. These are the monomers. When you make DNA, it can be very long. You make RNA, it's usually a copy of DNA when you make it, right? You use DNA as a template to make RNA. And it's not, it doesn't get quite as long as the DNA does, but <clears throat> polynucleotide is another name for nucleic acids. It just means many nucleotides, right? You put the, you link these together with a covalent bond using RNA polymerase or DNA polymerase, right? But um, there's no special name for the bond like you have with peptide bond or glycosidic bond with these. Okay, so this is mainly just meant to be a quick review. If you like before an exam or something to help you remind you of the things important for the macromolecules that you need to know.